Hello, hello. Good morning. I'm very excited to be here today for another live. We're going to try to do these every Wednesday um, around this time. So um, just be prepared that you can come back and watch them or you can come on live and interact with me. I'm very excited to have this opportunity to chat with you this morning. Hello, whoever joined. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to make yourself known in the comments or you can just stay right there where you are, whatever you're more comfortable with. But I'm glad you're here. Um, oh, it's, of course, it's my beautiful friend, Lashana. Thank you, darling. How are you? I hope you had great travels. You got yourself all prepared for this winter storm we're about to be hit with in our area, which is so unusual for us Texans, right? You got to go have some really good firsthand experience in getting through it last week. I hope that that was a great trip for you. Um, so today we're going to be talking about naysayers. This is something that's been coming up a lot lately is people talking about um, how their friends or their family or just whoever is not always for them in what it is that they're pursuing, really whether it's in business or in life. And so I thought it would be a fun topic to unpack a little bit this morning because um, it's something that I've encountered as well and I thought we could talk about how I got through it. There's really been a couple of different times in my life where I've encountered this. And I'm wondering, Lashana, since you're here, have you experienced a bit of that yourself? Have you seen um, where you've had friends or family who have um, balked a little bit at the business that you're trying to create and all you're putting into it? Um, you said it was amazing, but still don't like it. I'm with you. Give me 92 degrees every night. I'm with you on that too. Um, so I am wondering just if you have experienced some naysaying in your life, people who just don't seem to support or want to support you in what it is that you're doing and have to question it. Yes, they still do, she says. Um, so I, th it, I think it's an extremely common issue. And so as I was saying, there's been a couple of times in my life that this has happened where that I made really dumb decisions where people were going, what, what are you thinking about? Why did you do that? How could you do that? Um, good morning, whoever else joined. Glad you're here. Feel free to comment if you like. And so the first one was back in 1998. And I was working for Barnes & Noble. I was a regional director and traveling 10 states Monday through Friday every week sometimes Sunday through Friday, getting my travels into where I needed to go. And in 1998, my husband was a year and a half into a shop he had opened, a little store in downtown Georgetown, and was having some um, difficulty with it and was thinking about closing it rather than continuing on. And I said, you know what? I'm tired of traveling. Let me quit and let's just do it together. You can imagine the jaw drop that our family had in that here was our sole income, and it was a really good income. Plus, I had stock options. I had a company, Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokee, that was completely free to me. I had stock, you know, just a great salary. I had great benefits and perks and bonuses. And so to walk away from that kind of job to go work in a little tiny store with Lynn, who was <laughs> really not doing that great with it, was like, what in the world are y'all thinking? And um, I even remember whenever Lynn first decided to open the store, his dad talking to him and going, you know, son, that's a really risky proposition and I just don't know about that. And so what did we do? We just turned on deaf ears. We just said, you know what? It's our life and we get to choose how we live it. And if it doesn't work, guess what? We'll figure it out, we'll go do something else. And so keeping that mindset really served us well to just press on and grow that business. And we grew it for, well, 20 years before we sold it for a really nice profit. And so as our family watched and kind of marveled that, oh my goodness, this is actually working. You know, there was still that undertone of, we don't believe it, how long is it gonna last? Um, and so they really just, it was hard to get on board with and I totally understand that they want the best for us and you know that's the thing is most people do express their concern out of their love for you um, they just don't know how to do it in a way that's supportive instead they're doing it in a way that makes you question yourself and so I just encourage you in those situations to 
just stand firm, make your list of all the reasons why you know it's the right thing to do and forget what they're saying and just keep moving on because moving on is the only thing that isn't failure, right? Um, so that was the first one. The second one then is, so we did grow this store. It was providing an incredible life. I mean, we worked, oh, kind of, I don't know, 10 to four most days so that we could be there to get our kids off the school, be at home whenever, you know, pick them up from school, spend time with them after school. We got to where we had staff on Saturdays, so we didn't work weekends anymore. And um, so it was really a great life. It was providing everything we needed, everything we wanted. We were able to take vacations and do all the things that we did, controlling our own destiny in every way. So why in the world would we sell that business? So there became, okay, first we can't even believe you're going to go do this business. And then they got all comfortable with that and saw that we were able to make a success. And then here we go again, crazy people um, selling the business, going ahead and just letting it go. Why would we do that? Well, you know, in life, my husband and I both lo love change. We've been doing that for a long time. We've been able to mentor some businesses and help them uh, be successful. And we wanted to be able to help more people do that and really just felt like it was the right time and the right moment to make it happen. And so we said, you know what? We're just going to have faith, take the leap, do it, and hope for the best. Kind of like we did before. And so, you know, that's the cool thing about us as entrepreneurs, you know, is that we do have that, I'm going to take the leap, I'm going to have faith, and I'm going to see what happens kind of attitude. And unfortunately, not everyone else can have that kind of attitude. They need and crave security, consistency. They need and crave predictability. And you know what? We're not all designed the same. We're not all designed to need that. We're, some of us are designed to go a little wild, to go off the rails and see what happens, to take life by storm and just see where it's going to lead. And when you follow that passion, when you follow that vision, when you follow that direction, and you do it with great commitment and determination and ability to just be resourceful when things get tough, you can't help but win, right? Don't you find that, Lashana, that you just, as you move forward, you can't help but win because you are moving forward. So every day there's progress. Every day there is something good to be found, something new to learn, and something great to take from it. It doesn't have to be fulfilling that story that people put on us that, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Why don't you give up? Why don't you get a job? Um, I love it, yes, fail forward. You just move forward no matter what, even when it feels like you're failing. And I like to really say it's not even failure, it, because as long as you're moving, it isn't failure. It's clarification. It's just clarification. That step wasn't the right one. I just have to take another step, another step in a different direction. So as long as you're always moving forward, really, you're never failing. So that's what I really wanted to just quickly give to you today, is if you've got that little naysayer voice going off in your head over and over from the few people who have probably said it to you, maybe said it to you multiple times, but it's in there. And it starts to become eating your own little voice, going, why am I doing this? What is going on? This is scary. This was horrible. Um, you're right, Nick. Glad to see you, Nick. Um, most people are not that kind. And you know what? I think that part of that, I'm glad you said that because it really triggered for me that p part of it is I feel like sometimes it's a curiosity as well as a jealousy, but it's because of their own insecurity that they aren't the kind of people that are willing to take that leap. They're not the kind of people that are willing to just push forward and see and do what it, see what happens and just keep hoping and determining and doing all the steps that it takes to make it happen. They're not that kind of person. And because they can't even understand it, they become unkind about it. And so we have to recognize that's really more about them than it is about us. And when we really own what it is that we want to do, what our passion is, what our vision is, and what we know deep in our heart, I can make this happen. We absolutely can. Lashana says, if you quit, you're just going to have to start over from the beginning again. 
take the leap and trust God has you. Amen, sister. That is so good because it is, you do have to start over again. And whether that's starting over again in a job or a career and you start over in a job that you don't like and then you're just pushing yourself to do it every single day. So being true to yourself above all is all that matters. Let the, let the donkeys neigh out in their field where it's safe and where it, it's predictable and where somebody comes and gives them their little carrots and they do them and you do you. And that's what we really have to embrace as entrepreneurs because we have a bigger vision and we have that bigger vision for a reason. So we want to keep moving forward regardless. Work on just, I hear you voice, you're not serving me, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. On with it. Because it doesn't define you. It doesn't have to define you and it doesn't have to stop you. So we're all in this together to move it forward, to really say, you know what, this is what, this is what I'm meant to do and I'm going to do it. And just watch me. Because it's going to be really successful, success on my terms, success for what I want, success for what I feel God's put within me to do. He's equipped me and called me and prepared me for just this time. And I'm going to see it through and have fun watching me and being nervous for me. That's okay. So I really feel that's what it's all about. And I wanted to just bring that to you today because I feel like it is so predominant and I hear more and more all the time how people um, really get stalled worrying about what others are thinking, what others are saying, what others might be thinking that we're imagining and you know what it's all just made up stories. So go with the facts that you know and like Lashana says just make the calls dang it. <laughs> Because when you're going, oh, I don't want to make the call because someone's going to judge me and they're going to, um, it's not going to go like I think it's going to. And I'm going to feel rejected. I'm going to feel ignored. It's letting go of all of that, your stories that you're making up and you just do it. And then it, you take it for what it turns out and you go, well, that was clarifying. Either they're in or they're not, or maybe they're on the fence, but now onward, just keep going. And that's how we build it. We just keep going. One day, one step, one action, one new idea, one new just solid determination to get through something that's telling us, eh, don't do it. It's too scary. That's how we get there. So thank you so much for being here today. If you're watching the recording, um, be sure and comment, reach out. If you need some help with working on that little voice and dealing with those naysayers, reach out. You know I'm always here for you. So I wish you a very great week. If you're here in Texas, I think everybody's going to have absolute cold in the next couple of days. So uh, stay in, stay warm, and uh, we'll be slipping out of here before long. I think maybe on Friday we'll be able to get back out and going. So um, those of you who are used to this winter stuff, really think about us because we're not and we're wimps. And so... <laughs> Send us some uh, some uh, vibes of warmth and uh, tolerance. Um, thank you, Lashana. I love and appreciate you too. Um, and we, you know, when I'm sing saying it, I say it to myself too. What I whatever I teach, it's something I need to hear as well, and it reinforces it for me. So thank you for being here to share that with me, and have a beautiful week. Take care.